The word is covet. 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 Not covenant. Not coven. Like Not a witch's coven. Cover. <laughs> covet. Covet. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I was listening to some old podcasts since you're just look checking your phone and not. Uh, yeah, sorry talking. about that. I used to say hello with such enthusiasm. Really? Because unfortunately, I save all of my audio recordings. Yeah. It goes to my Apple Music. Oh. And I sh- should just go through and delete everything, yeah. but I don't have time for that. Right. And um, so I'll be listening to like some juice world and then all of a sudden it'll switch to a podcast and i come in like hello and welcome back to the croak and grow podcast like that was i energetic as well no it's you're sort of like and i am blueberry muffin okay i am barrister Bar- <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm serious i realized what it just sounded like when i said it out loud right i embarrassed you her, embarrassed her but i didn't i want to say i'm a barrister who's a what's a barrister a lawyer oh i'm a barrister i am barrister and this here is frank looking good looking like half of a body because the bottom blends in. <laughs> no he doesn't he he's a like floating a body floating body um yeah because the problem is in trinidad they were calling the lawyers barristers because it's the english system mm, and parliamentary they have an accent so they say Barrister. I am barrister. No, like, they don't, I didn't know any. Bar- a barrister. And you thought they were saying barista? Well, no, I can't ever say barista now because my mind always wants to say barrister because I learned the word. You're a barrister. Um, how are you guys doing? It's been a while. It's been a, a no, couple. It hasn't, has it? Well, it's only Wednesday. So it's oh. been since last Friday. Yep. Which is a while, like, as much of a while as we get. Um, Away from you, find people. <clears throat> Starting over again. But um, how how is life? Life for me is good. I officially am like I've began my week, my my first official week at at the new job, where I'm uh dealing with kids. Yes. Teaches you something. Future. Future kids. No, They're not, not there yet. I'm not, dealing with women. No, you are dealing with the future. Oh, I'm dealing future, with the future. The future, everybody's. Yes. I'm who doing, right I'm, now are just coloring the, the, what i'm looking at is a lump of clay yeah and every person that you know talks to them or also it could works be scary them, you know people work, well that's what i'm saying every, yeah. so you have to think of it like that right think of it as a lump of clay right up until you're i mean obviously it continues going but the same is with clay what happens with clay it dries out it dries out and the younger you are it's like the softer it is and every person you come in contact with has puts a little impression right if it's just a small interaction just a little yeah obviously you know mom and dad they're molding it every day Maybe. and um it's important because you know when it does start to dry out can you still change things yeah, yeah. sure but it becomes a lot harder so you want to get that clay right in the well i meant that it was scary because like if, if you look at um children you say oh there's the future like one day you you know i could be in a hospital and this little boy will be my doctor yeah you know but it could also be one day this could be my murderer. That's true. Yeah. Well, I think I mean, but I think that is the goal. Obviously, there's a nature versus nurture. Mm-hmm. Not to be murdered by. The uh, yeah, kids I was you, wondering what kind of goal that was. That's the goal of having a a impression on children is to good try to make more doctors than murderers. Okay. Because yeah, you know, some doctors are murderers. You hear that, Doctor Chavez? You killed my father. Chavez. Um. Yeah, but I like it. It's uh, it's teaching me a lot about about children. So first, I ever worked with children. Well, it's teaching me a lot about children's. It's teaching me a lot about the children's. I want to put know. this up here because you know when they sing, they're always like, ah. I think it's usually coming from down. Yeah, there. it's coming from the ceiling down. Um, yeah, it's cool. Who knew? Who knew I, I'd be working with children? God, if, if, he knows amen. everything. He knows everything. Amen to that, sister. He knows that today is um. Trinidad Independence Day. <laughs> I was saying it. I already yeah. said Trinidad once when we started. Trinidad Independence Day, as you guys know. And Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago Day, Independence Day. As you guys know, I am Trinidadian and Tobago. And I am not. You, are you just like what? I'm a fan. A fan. Okay. 
Yeah, you're a support. You're an ally. Yeah, I'm an ally. You're an ally. You're not. You're not. I'm a TNT ally. Yeah. Okay. You're not in the acronym Trinidadian. No. You're not a T O T N T or no. You are a ally. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Uh, who did they get independence from? I'll tell you, England. The United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> what is the United Kingdom? Yeah. Um, like many of the Caribbean colonies, uh, Europe went down there and said, wow, this is free land that doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs I'll, to someone. I'll take it. It belongs to someone. Yeah. And so... Uh, they coveted it, coveted it they and co- then they fought for it. Yes, they did. And um, so, but, you know, in, in a weird way, that's how I'm here today because my dad spoke English. And um, there, so there wasn't a language barrier for you to meet him. Interesting. Fall in love and have me. Right. Because I cannot speak um, Carib or Arawak. Yeah. Which are the indigenous languages of Trinidad. Um, so I just, I just saw that. Um, sorry. Uh, and I don't know if it's true because, you know, I only ever look at one thing. Headlines. Um, that there was a... Uh, a, a, a Brazilian indigenous tribe that had never been touched or something by people, and the last person just died. Oh, really? Yeah. That, how do they make it that long and then just die? I don't know. Like it, maybe you could look it up. Yeah. Look, here it is. Or, I mean, may, I guess or maybe it, not. I guess it makes sense because you have to imagine back in the day with. So they lasted for since civilization, right? You're saying they were untouched. Yeah. And um, you know, back in the day, you'd migrate and you'd run into other indigenous tribes. Right. Being the last one, unless you were inbreeding. Keep it going, yeah. You can't... Everyone else is like, oh, don't come this way. I have right. I have a cell phone. Right. Man. It's a crazy world we live in. It is. Um, and there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago of, of African descent. African descent. Um, Indian descent. Well, today is... Uh, International Day for people of African descent. Oh, it so is. We can't, it is. We can only celebrate half of the population. Yes, yes, uh, definitely celebrate. Last year, first year. Well, oh, really? Yeah. Which what, which coincided with Juneteenth being oh, a federal okay. holiday. Yeah, this is international, and um, United Nations decided. And so last year, August thirty first, and for every August thirty first going forward, mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be International Day for people of African descent. To celebrate the diverse heritage and several contributions. Yeah, absolutely. It is uh, eat outside your trail mix, I believe. I think you're mel- melding holidays together. It's eat- National Eat Outside Day and National Trail Mix Day. Trail mix is only meant to be eaten outside. It's made from the outside, I think. It's like sticks, no. stones. <laughs> I think they throw M&Ms in there. I wonder... I don't think so. I think the M and M's is one of those uh, Trader s- Joe trail mix. Yeah, to try to make it well, yeah. a little more kid friendly. But I'm guessing trail mix is OG trail mix, yeah. which was given Raw me oatmeal. is you're a, a, a adventurer. Yeah, I'm gonna be out. I am not making a meal. Yeah, I need it. Can't it can't spoil? I need something that has high protein, right? High carbs, and it's just probably yeah, probably just like mashed up sticks and stones yeah because you can't even brush your teeth out there you can't be eating sugar you can't even brush your teeth no where would you get a toothbrush you weld one you you, you whittle one together <laughs> i think that's a line in the office where he's like what do you brush your teeth with a stick and butter or something like not a stick of butter oh my gosh okay any other holidays not nothing worth talking about okay then we'll just go right to one word wednesday it's wednesday guys Every time we do this, I always... So, it's One Word Wednesday. So, see what I just did there. You'll bring it... You'll say it's One Word Wednesday. Uh-huh. And I don't know if I should shoot it in then. And so, I usually end up shooting it in when I say it. Oh. But then I feel like if you're ever watching it back, you're like, did my One Word Wednesday not have enough oomph to like power no, the slide over? No, I've watched all of our previous videos, podcasts, YouTube, which you can do on a playlist. And I see so many, um, it's very uh, up to the editor of when the words fly in. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's up to the editor. It's usually on my cue. That's fine. Even when you cue it in. Oh, that's fine. Okay. That's fine, sir. That's absolutely fine. It is one word Wednesday. It is. I said the word earlier as a little, you know, a little, just to plant it in the people's minds. Yeah. You'll you'll probably hear us say it and be like, I don't know why that was on yeah, my mind. Yeah, why does that sound familiar? Because we already said it. You didn't even know. The word is covet. 
Covet. Covet. Not covenant. Not coven. Like a witch's coven. Cover. (laughs) Covet. 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 No, covet. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Only? Thy neighbor's goods. Yeah. So it's the two things. Um, And that's quite controversial, actually. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, because... All right, so let's jump right into it. Because Stacy's mom just has it going on. No. So the word is covet. What does covet mean? Covet means to desire, to want, to, to, in the sense of a woman, to lust over and want for yourself. Yeah. To want it so badly that you start to hatch plans in your head of how yeah. I can get it. Yeah. Um, like, like David coveted um, Bathsheba. From yeah, um, I always forget his name. But every time I hear it, I'm like, "That's it." Um, yeah. I don't know if yeah, I don't know. It, I think covet's probably worse than jealous, right? Because jealous doesn't really mean it's a, you're going to take any actions on it. Yeah, jealous is why does he have that and I don't? Yeah, covet is he has that and I'm going to get it. Yeah, like you're more agitated. Like yeah. jealous could be like you're more depressed about it. Like yeah, no, yeah, je- yeah jealous, jealous is is I wish I had that. Covet is I want that. I want that. I I, I desire that. And I really that. can't rest until I get it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you can get jealous over someone's dinner, right? But to want to covet someone's dinner, it's yeah. And also, like, I'm it's, gonna it's, I'm gonna eat that when you're not looking. From what I've seen, you know, it 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 um. I only ever hear covet actually in a in a biblical sense. Yeah, I think it's pretty biblical, like an old school word. Yeah, because also when when we say like then they then they hatch a plan to get it, it's usually not. It's usually not a fair plan. It's usually not like, hey, how much money for the goat? It's like, I'm just going to steal your goat. Yeah. You know, I got, you. hey, get your goat. That's a saying. He got my goat or I'm, I got your goat. Got your goat. Yeah. It's a saying. So the reason I said it was, it was controversial is because, and I didn't even know this until I looked up the word today, that the Catholic set of 10 commandments is different than the, than Jewish oh, okay. or other Christians. And that is because St. Augustine, um, he split. We have two two um, commandments for covet. We say, don't covet your neighbor's wife. We say that first. Yeah. And then we say, don't covet your neighbor's goods. And that's second. So it's the so ninth, that's Catholic. That's Catholic. So ninth, people are watching aren't Catholic are like, why did you separate those? Why'd you separate them? Um, uh, regular, <laughs> regular Christians, non-Catholic Christians, um, which, where is it? Oh, yeah. Non-Catholic Christians just have number 10. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor his wife, nor anything that belongs to him. So what's their extra commandment? Their extra commandment, which they really take offense, and it's not the topic of today, but is they say that um, you shouldn't uh, make graven Im- images, right? Thou shalt not make oh. unto thee any graven image. And that's why people take offense to Catholics, because they say, you took the a commandment out and Just then because you, you love the art you you, you make the art yeah. right so the catholic um the catholic uh i didn't even know that wasn't one of them the catholics yeah the catholic thought, this entire time i've been thinking of 11 commandments oh. i mean there's like a hundred and first of all yes the, that's the thing this is like the golden rule right it's like oh is there one rule right if you look at back at the scrolls there was like 150 yeah. commandments right but the 10 most important yeah yeah so um so it, the Catholics, when they say don't have um, strange gods before me, it is the Catholics feel that we're saying, right, and don't make images of gods. And, and in a way, we're arguing that they doubled up and they're yeah. arguing, or not doubled up, split, split, split one thing right. being said. And they're arguing we split that, one thing exactly. being said. Because we're saying, well, graven image is... The idea of that is you're making a human god that's right, not me, right? And we're, and they're saying, well, the point of not coveting anything of your neighbors means the wife and right. the goods. So, um, I think I, I think the Catholics are more progressive for it because it's saying that like, well, we need to separate that. You know, your your wife isn't an object. Oh, okay. Right. Like, yeah. If you think about it, they're saying. Anything of your neighbors, yeah. Whether, it's whether, all his belongings. whether it be his wheelbarrow or his wife. Oh, right. And we're saying, whoa, you're putting that in the same boat, right? You know, don't steal the wheelbarrow. Separate note: don't steal your girl, your right. boyfriend, your boyfriend's wife. <laughs> That's an interesting dynamic. <laughs> don't steal your neighbor's wife. Right, right. So ours is ninth and tenth. We talk about coveting, and 
you're right. Number nine is just saying wife. And then number 10 is saying Anything, everything else. Yeah, all his possessions. Wife's not a possession. Everything else. Um, there are two separate, um, again, like this isn't a Ten Commandments podcast, but um, there are two s- separate uh, Bible books that talk about the Ten Commandments. It is Deuteronomy and um, Exodus, 40 years apart. So Exodus is the book of Exodus talking about Moses. And then Deuteronomy is like Moses talking. So he brings it all up again. Yeah. And um, they're out of order. So like if anyone really does say like, that's the fourth commandment. Like it really was no order. They, these things were written and yeah. they were important and they were repeated. But um, so the word is covet. Okay. What do you want to do with it? Do you have anything to talk about? I can talk about my school. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm learning a lot of things and I'm starting to know why Jesus uh, said kids were important. Because they, they show things all on face value of human nature. And it's easy to see from that older to younger perspective yeah. what a lot of this stuff means. So today, for example, I, w- I brought it up to the teacher. I said, these kids only want toys if the other kids are playing with it. Oh, yeah. And it was it was very it was like annoying because then the one kid would cry right because you were taking it and it's like you never wanted that race car isn't that funny until you saw someone playing with it. Now I'm not gonna compare playing with it to a wife, but yeah, there is this sense of, mm. and I think it goes back to the jealousy thing, right? Like right. jealous of someone is different. It's like oh that kid in the playground, he has a nicer bike than I have. Right, you're jealous of it. But coveting is, I think there is that idea of you only want it because I have it, right? Like it's that it's that sort of like, yeah, it it, it adds value to it. It, because, adds, it yeah. adds value, and right. so you're not only you know like jealous, but you're taking something from someone that you are seeing. That's what it is. It's like with a wife, it's like you see that this wife is adding value to that person, right. and so you're hurting two things. Like you're you're hurting yourself by doing that and then you're you're hurting you're taking away what someone else already had right and what they were what was bringing them joy what was bringing them love right and you're saying you don't deserve that love because i want that love right and maybe not even maybe not even the love part right so it's like yeah you're you're ruining something of someone's that they care about just because of your random desire that's why i compared it to the kids it's like the kid who picked the toy out of the entire box of toys wanted to play with that toy and is playing with it. And it's the person that now sees them having yeah. fun. It's like, you could go to the box and you could find something that you like that's brand new. You don't want to because I see them having fun. I want, right. I, want, I want that toy. Right. There's a million toys over here. You want that toy. Why? Because that person has it when they took the time. Yeah, I don't um, want to compare children to animals, but I see that with the dogs too. Well, you know. Any toy that the one dog gets. Yeah. The other guy drops. He could he could have a hot dog in his mouth. He drops it and come like, oh wait, isn't that funny? Yeah. So it really is an added. Um, it's more desirable because, is it because you get the item and you beat somebody? I, I see. So yeah, that's the thing. I I don't want because children wouldn't know that. Yeah, I I yeah. don't want to say it's so much about beating them. It's about your. You were made aware of it. Yeah, you were made aware of it, and mm-hmm. it's like, so you're you're hurting, selfish. Like that's what I mean. Kids are inherently, you know, they they don't get that's kind of like empathy or anything yet. Right. And that's like that's what you learn, and so it's only I want. I don't care about your feelings. Right. But on a big scale, that's what it is. It's you're directly hurting someone. It's interesting. Okay, so now you're saying this. Because you're saying about children, you're like, they don't know yet. And so that's pretty interesting. And it would make sense for a child to act that way, but not for an adult to act that way. Because a child is like, especially the, the age of children that you're teaching, you know, they really are trying to figure out yeah. like everything. And so that is signaling to them that is something that you want. Yes. You know, and then they're like, well, I'll go get it. And then, of course, as they get older, it would be like, okay, it is something that I want, but I can't just take it from. Yeah. From the other person. And then that's when you see the story of David. Of when he you know, went through Bathsheba. I, I, I see you. I like you. I want you. And then in an attempt to, you know, once he got her pregnant, send his good friend to the front of the battlefield. Right. In a, essentially a suicide mission. Right. Um, but it all goes back to that childhood based desire of, 
I see something of someone else's. I don't, I, it, and it's not even I wish ill upon them. David didn't bring up the friend until yeah, he didn't consider until there was something to get in trouble for. Right. It was it's that lack of consideration for your fellow neighbor. Right. And the coveting being bad, even if you can't follow through on it. So like David was very um, influential and yeah. important and he was in a position to get what he wanted. So he coveted and then he took. But I'm guessing just coveting if, if you don't have the ability to take is still wrong. Yes. Because also you're doing yourself a disservice. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go back to that. I feel like this is going to start turning into... This is going to be a common theme of me using these kids as examples. That's but, good. Yeah, maybe I was put in this position. Yeah. No, but Esther, you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, you know, David was anyone who covets their neighbor's goods. And I'm going to go back to the analogy of that first kid went to the boxes and looked at what he wanted truly. Right. And found it and is using it. And now by coveting that because they're using it, because they're having fun, you're doing you're you're not going to the box the box of of, of life and opportunity right. and searching for what you, what you really want if you spend all your life being like you only do things because you see other people do them right it's social media though yeah isn't that what social media is what teaching us to covet yeah i mean when people do a sponsored ad you know a sponsored post it's saying I drink this juice or I use this makeup. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. And it's, it's interesting. It's promoting covetousness. Well, is that really what coveting is though? Like a role model? I don't know. Because it's not of theirs. Like, All right. So we'll, we'll go to... um. But I mean, yeah, it definitely goes <clears throat> off that base desire of... I see, or yeah, you definitely... You, when you see people having fun with something, it's like... No, I, I still don't think that is. Because like, I, I think it's definitely more of... Aren't they? Aren't they you need to be taking, taking our attention and saying, "I'm having such fun with this"? Don't you want it? Aren't they sort of tempting us yeah, to be covetous? Yeah. No, because you're not taking it from them. Let me t- let me read you. Yeah, um, I think part of the coveting is you need to take it from them. Let me read you a letter from Paul to the uh-huh. Romans, and it's um Paul. Uh, sorry, Romans seven verses seven and eight. It's it says it starts like you know they have titles: the law and sin, and it says. What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, produced in me every kind of coveting. For apart from the law, sin was dead. What do you think about that? This is Paul saying, I wouldn't have even known I was coveting or to covet if someone hadn't told me, hey, don't you covet that beautiful, you know, horse? I like it. I like it. I'm going to bring up these, these stupid kids again. <laughs> Say that. No. A lot of the Bible is is not, I, I like what, what Paul is saying, because it's like, it's not, it's a no-brainer. Don't be a bad guy. And like some things are, and so it's like, you know, like, oh, okay, I shouldn't kill. Yeah, thank you for that. Right. But when you, when you see on a very small scale of kids, and they are confused. Yeah. Like when, I, when I, I'm telling them, I'm like, you can't play with that. Like, go find a joy. It's like almost to the point of tears sometimes. It, there's this lack of understanding. Okay. But I want to play with it. Right. Like, uh, but I look, I, it looks fun. Yeah. I want to play. With it. it does not process in their head that what they're doing is wrong. They right. don't They don't see it as hurting the other person. Okay. They don't, they don't see it as stealing. Mm-hmm. They see it as what, you know, if they were going to the boxes, fun toy. I want, I play. Right. Fun toy. I play. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but you're, you're taking that away from someone else who did it the right way. Right. And like he said, I wasn't known until I was told. That's what my, that's what basically this age of teaching is, is to explain to them. And now you and I both know if you know, I'm playing with this Rubik's cube and you just walk over mid podcast and steal from <laughs> me, it would be like, what did you just do? Right. Because it's like, we've learned and, right. and it's learned behavior. And a lot of what the Bible is, is that, once you learn it and you start to understand things outside of yourself, right? Where it's like, well, you're not just taking a toy. You're hurting someone else who right. picked that toy out. Right. And it, it's that idea of broadening your mind. And so the same thing on bigger scales where it's like you could see a pretty girl with a boyfriend and be like, I'm going to get that. And it's like, yeah, because you're thinking of you being with a pretty girl. You're not right. thinking of 
w- would you hurt that guy mm-hmm. equally if it was just you and him in a room? Would you like? Right. Would you hurt him? Right. No, I wouldn't. Well, so then why are like so then you're why would aren't you why would, are you willing to hurt him? Yeah. In this circumstance, and it's like, oh, well, I guess it's sort of out of like I'm not thinking about it. Right. And I think so. That's the importance of what Paul is saying. That's interesting. Um, that you know we're talking about the uh, the um commandments, and so we have thou shalt not steal is number seven. I find it interesting and a bit more complex to then come down. So seven is thou shalt not steal, which is the end result of coveting, right? Yeah. Um, and they're obviously going, I mean, like I said, scholars debate the order because yeah. these lists were made up. Yeah. Uh, Bible verses were not even numbered originally. Yeah. Someone numbered them. Because they're books. Yeah. So, but but um, the way that they are put in and the way we do study them isn't is an order of importance. That's the way I was taught them. The first three have to do with God, yeah. you know, and then we move down. And of course, kill is up here and, you know, but but anyway, you have seal at number seven. And and then for ours, at least is um, nine and ten. Mo- other people, it's just ten, which is thou shalt not covet. Um, I, do you find that coveting, it, you know, for, the, the need to be more specific about like not just steal. Uh, so there's already thou shall not steal. Yeah, there's this. Okay, now let now let me explain that stealing doesn't happen just impulsively. Yeah. There's the plot, or there's the, um, you know, the bad intention. Yeah. Before it. Yeah. Which is which is, it's it's on there with the other ones of do not steal, do not kill. You know. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think. Um, I think it, it, it might. Yeah, it might be like the the intrinsic personal value of uh, what someone has. And so you're you're taking away something someone that someone cares about. Stealing, I think, is very cut and dry monetarily. Right. You are financially hurting someone. Right. Like you stole from me. I worked hard for that. Cut and dry. Biz- well, in the same vein, do not commit adultery. So, like, talk about combining. We could just say like that all goes together. Don't don't steal your neighbor's wife. Don't have you know relations with her. But these are separate. So it's like, don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't covet. Like, it's surprising that covet is such an important thought. And I I think, I think why is because once again, so steal, like I said, I think it's it's pretty cut and dry. Adultery is for yourself, right? Like you want to live as pure of a life as you can because you don't want to be distracted by things. Right. Covet, I think is important because it is the love your neighbor. Stealing is bad, right? Like it's like you're, you did something wrong. To, you did something wrong. Yeah. You stole. Right. Somebody might not even knew you stole. It doesn't change it's wrong. Yeah. You could steal from Walmart. Right. And it's not like that com- That commandment is still talking about that. Right. I think covet is bringing up the point of the same as loving your neighbor. It's, it does it in a negative way. Don't covet your neighbor's stuff. Don't cover your neighbor's wife. But it could just as easily be love your neighbor. Yeah. And then if you truly love your neighbor, then you won't want to. Uh, you, sh- you shouldn't. That's when that's what. We as teachers, as teachers, uh, it's, two, it's been two days out it's here. A veteran, and, veteran teacher. <laughs> that's what you. It's like that's what, that's the explanation. Is that's your friend's toy. Right. That's your friend's toy. And it's like you change it to neighbors, and it's like that's what coveting is. It's not why'd you steal that. It's not why are you being an adulterer. It's that's your neighbor. Right. Remember that. Like right. that's don't steal your don't hurt your neighbor. How about that? I like it. All right, guys. Well, that is the podcast. Mm-hmm. Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't covet this podcast. No. You, you can have it. You can be jealous of what we got, but don't come grabbing. No, they can have it. it, oh. it can you covet something that you can have? Well, technically, I don't know. We'll be back tomorrow for Walk Through Thursday. Be there or be square. Shout out Trinidad. Shout out Trail Mix. Peace. <laughs>